Hello students. Today we are going to deal with the second chapter of your textbook Behave. The name of this chapter is The Sound of Music. This chapter has two parts. Part one is Evelyn Glenny listens to music, listen to sound without hearing it. Second part is the Shahnai of Bismillah Khan. And today we will deal with the first part. Evelyn Glenny listens listens to sound without hearing it by Deborah Cowley. Let us see something about the writer, the author. Deborah Mason Cowley is a freelance writer and broadcaster. She grew up in Toronto, graduated from the University of Western Ontario, and moved moved to Ottawa to work for the Unitarian Service Committee. She traveled across the world while writing articles for Reader's Digest. Her writings have been translated to various languages. She worked for CBC Television in London and Egypt. Doctor of Courage, Cairo. One Woman's Journey are a few of her famous writings. Talking about this chapter, the title of this chapter is very interesting one. Here, the author says, Evelyn Glenny listens to sound without hearing it. Now, we all wonder, we are confused. How can you listen to sound when you can't hear? This is something we will discover that how Evelyn Glenny was able to listen to sound, although she could not hear. Now, before we, before we proceed to the chapter, let us discuss the opinion of some people about Evelyn Glenny. God may have taken her hearing, but he has given her back something extraordinary. We, what we hear, she feels far more deeply than any of us. This is why she expresses music so beautifully. Someone has commented this about Evelyn. He says that although God took away her hearing power, but he gave her an extraordinary thing about and that was the sense of feeling. She could feel very deeply, far more deeply than the normal people. And that is why she was able to express music so beautifully. Evelyn is a very well-known multi-percussionist. She plays different percussion instruments like xylophone, drums, etc. In this chapter, we read about a person who fought against her physical disabilities and made her life a very successful story. The story of Evelyn Gurney is a motivational one. It inspires all of us to overcome our physical disabilities and achieve our goals and dreams. This story tells us how willpower defeats physical disabilities. Now, let us understand the lesson in detail. Rush our crowds jostle for position on the underground train platform. A slight girl, looking younger than her 17 years, was nervous yet excited as she felt the vibra vibrations of the approaching train. It was her first day at the prestigious Royal Academy of Music in London and daunting enough for any teenager fresh from a Scottish farm. The opening scene uh, of this chapter is of the train platform. It is underground, it is an underground uh, tra railway platform and there is a huge rush at the platform. People are pushing roughly each other to get away. There is a small girl, it is Evelyn. Evelyn is standing at the railway, railway platform waiting for the train. And just as she feels the vibrations of the approaching train, she realizes that the train is about to come. She gets nervous and excited. This is the train that will take her to London. She is going to London to learn music as she has got admission in one of the uh, world famous and uh, most music academy, Royal Academy of Music. 
Right now, Evelyn is in Scotland. Evelyn belongs to Scotland. As you know, Scotland is a European country. Life in Scotland is not as fast as in London. London has a very fast life. It is urban, whereas Scotland has farms and countryside. That is why Evelyn is nervous because she is leaving London for, sorry, leaving Scotland for London. And she is excited also because she is doing something that she always dreamt of. She is doing something that she wanted to do the most in her life. Otherwise, the, li the life ambition is going to come true. She is going to the Royal Academy of Music to learn music. Evelyn is 17 years of age. She is a teenager and she is fresh from a Scottish farm. She is from a village as Evelyn is from Scotland which has more farms and countryside. So she has not seen fast life. That is why she is nervous. But this aspiring musician faced a bigger challenge than most. She was profoundly deaf. Evelyn Glennie's loss of hearing had been gradual. But here, this aspiring musician, the musician who, the person who wants to become a great musician, Evelyn could not hear. She was deaf. And this was a bigger challenge for her. Moving from a rural area to a fast life was a smaller challenge. Evelyn faced much bigger challenge that was her inability to hear. Slowly, she started losing the power of hearing and one day she was profoundly or absolutely deaf. Her mother remembers noticing something was wrong when the eight-year-old Evelyn was standing waiting to play the piano. They called her name and she didn't move. I suddenly realized she hadn't heard, says Isabel Glennie. Uh, for quite a while, Evelyn managed to conceal her growing deafness from her friends and teachers. Isabel Glennie is Evelyn's mother. Her mother, Isabel Glennie, recollects one incident when Evelyn was eight years old. She says that Evelyn was waiting for her turn to play the piano, but when her name was called out, she did not respond. And her mother realized that Evelyn did not hear her name being called out and her mother Isabel felt that there was something wrong with her hearing. And Evelyn, Evelyn lost her sense of hearing in faces, in stages, step by step it was lost. It was a gradual process. In the beginning, when she could hear partially, she managed to conceal, managed to hide the disability from her friends and teachers. But by the time she was 11, her marks had deteriorated and her headmistress urged her parents to take her to a specialist. It was then discovered that her hearing was severely impaired. As a result of gradual nerve damage, there were, they were advised that she should be fitted with hearing aids and sent to a school for the deaf. When Evelyn was 11 years of old, her marks had started deteriorating, reducing, declining. The marks was becoming less, uh, less and less. She was getting very poor mark in her exams. The headmistress observed the girl and found that there was something wrong with her hearing and informed her parents and told them that they should take her, their daughter uh, to a doctor, to a specialist doctor who is specialized, specialized in the treatment of the ear. When the doctor checked upon Evelyn, he found out that Evelyn had lost the sense of hearing. The doctor advised Evelyn's parents that they should get hearing aids for her. They should find something in order to fix her hearing capacity to make to repair to make something to treat her hearing capacity that something should be done you know hearing equipment it is something that is fixed in your ear so that it will help you to hear some uh, something better 
He also suggested that Evelyn should be sent to the school for deaf children. Evelyn was, Evelyn suddenly, everything suddenly looked black, says Evelyn. But Evelyn was not going to give up. She was determined to lead a normal life and pursue her interest in music. When Evelyn discovered that she could not hear and that she would be sent to a school for the deaf children and she was not as good as normal children, her world became colorless. It turned everything black. Now, what does this mean? Everything suddenly looked black. It means that all of a sudden you get such a bad news. You get some news that you don't expect. And in return, you see blackness all around. You realize that you are not going to lead a normal life. But Evelyn was not ready to give up. This shows Evelyn had determination. Although Evelyn got such shocking news, still she was determined and she did not want to give up. Evelyn was passionate about music and this news did not break her. This news that she is not going to be able, not going to hear anything anymore and this news did not break her heart she was determined to live like, like any other normal people and follow her interest in music she did not want to drop that she wanted to continue her learning of music one day she noticed a girl playing a xylophone and decided that she wanted to play it too most of the Teachers discouraged her, but percussionist Ronald Forbes spotted her potential. When Evelyn saw a girl playing the xylophone, she wanted to play too, because music is there in her blood, music is there in her every, every part of her body, so she felt that she should play. Evelyn's teachers discouraged her, because they knew that she could not hear. And hearing was an important part of music. But Ron Forbes, Ronald Forbes, saw that Evelyn was very passionate about music. And so he decided to do something for her. He began tuning two large drums to different notes. Don't listen through your ears, he would say. Try to sense it some other way. Ron Forbes thought that he would teach Evelyn to feel music. He took two large drums and he tuned them to different notes. He tuned each drum to different notes so that the sound that the drum produced different sound. Both the drums made different sounds. They, then he told Evelyn, don't try to listen through your ears. Evelyn, he asked her to use her senses, to sense the music, not to hear the music, not, do, do not try to feel the music, do not, to try, do not try to hear the music, just try to feel the music in some other way, he suggested. So it's Evelyn, suddenly I realized I could feel the higher drum from the waist up and the lower one from the waist down. Forbes repeated the exercise and soon Evelyn discovered that she could sense certain knots in different parts of her body. It is something surprising, right? The middle part of her body is called the waist. Now, as Ron Forbes had tuned both the drums to different tones, knots, the upper part of Evelyn's body, that is above the waist, could feel the higher knots of the drum and the lower part of the body the part down from the waist could feel the lower notes of the drum this is how evelyn can listen to music listen to sound although she cannot hear she can sense different notes in different parts of her body i had learned to play learned to open my mind and body to sounds and vibrations the rest was sheer determination and hard work she never looked back from that point onwards 
Ron Forbes taught Evelyn to respond to different sounds. Different parts of Evelyn's body responded to different sounds and that is how she identified the sounds and the different vibrations. Now, once she could identify the sounds and vibrations, the hurdle, the obstacle had been overcome and Evelyn's career went upward as she had determin determination to overcome famous, over overcome all these obstacles and she wanted to become famous as a good musician, as a good uh, player of these percussion instruments. She worked very hard to achieve the goal. Once Evelyn overcame the hurdle, she progressed in her career. She toured the United Kingdom with a youth orchestra and by the time she was 16, she had decided to make music her life. She auditioned for the Royal Academy of Music and scored one of the highest marks in the history of the Academy. Evelyn went around the United Kingdom and performed with a youth or orchestra. But by the time Evelyn reached the age of 16, she had decided to make music her life. She had set the aim in her life. Evelyn gave an audition for the admission to the Royal Academy of Music and her score was highest in the history of the Academy. No other person had scored such a high score as Evelyn did in the Academy. She gradually moved from orchestral work to solo performances. At the end of her three-year-old course, she had captured most of the top awards. Initially, Evelyn performed in group uh, with those people in the orchestra. As she got well in music and as she got the confidence, she started performing alone. She had achieved all the top awards by the time she had completed her three-year course at the Royal Academy of Music. And for all this, Evelyn won't accept any hint of heroic achievement. If you work hard and know where you are going, you will get there. This is what she says. If anyone says that Evelyn has done something great and heroic, she does not acknowledge that. She is very humble and down to earth. Evelyn says that there are two important things for success. Firstly, hard work. And secondly, aim or target. We should have a target and for that, you know, to achieve that target, we should work hard. She says, if we have an aim, a target which you have to achieve and work hard towards it, then you will definitely achieve it. And she got right to the top. The world's most sought after multi-percussionist with a mastery of some thousand instruments and hectic international schedule. It is intriguing to watch Evelyn function so effortlessly without hearing. Evelyn achieved her goal. She worked hard and she had an aim to become the top most. The most famous, the most sought after musician of the world. And she did that. She gained mastery of almost 1000 musical instruments and she and she is the most popular multi percussionist of the world she has a very busy schedule she has programs <coughs> and concerts all over the world when <coughs> sorry when you watch evelyn work or perform so effortlessly although she cannot hear you get very curious because Evelyn can identify the slightest, the minutest sound made by the musical instruments. <clears throat> In our two hour discussion, she never missed a word. Men with bushy beards give me trouble, she laughed. The writer Deborah Cowley took Evelyn's interview which lasted for two hours and Deborah says 
that Evelyn never missed a single word that she spoke. Evelyn says that those men who have long, huge, bushy beards give her troubles. Why do they give her troubles? Because when they speak, she cannot see their lip movement as their lips are covered with the bushy beards. This is the reason why she says that the men, those men who have got uh, long beards, they trouble her in understanding what they say. It is not just watching the lips, it is the whole face, especially the eyes. She speaks flawlessly with a Scottish lilt. Evelyn says that she does not only see the lip movement of the person's face to make out what the person is speaking. She sees the whole face, that means the entire expression on the face of the speaker makes Evelyn identify or know what the person is saying. She adds, the expression of the eyes helps her make out what the person sitting in front of her is saying. The writer says that Evelyn's speech is flawless, faultless, without any mistake in that. And she has a Scottish accent. Of course, she will have that Scottish accent because she is from Scotland. My speech is clear because I could hear till I was 11, she says. But, what does it, but that doesn't explain how she managed to learn French and master basic Japanese. When asked about Evelyn's speech, because she speaks very fluently and without any mistake, so she was asked what is the secret behind that. Evelyn says that she can speak clearly because she had learned the language until the age of 11. She studied uh, till the age of 11, till the time uh, she could hear. But after becoming deaf, Evelyn also learned two new languages. She has learned French and basic Japanese. So it is a wonder that she learned these two new languages despite her deafness. It's not that easy for a deaf person to learn a language and speak that language fluently. As for music, she explains, it pours in through every part of my body. It tingles in the skin, my cheekbones and even in my hair. When she plays the xylophone, she can sense the sound passing up the stick into her fingertips. Here, Evelyn explains how she identifies music. It creates sensation in her skin, in her cheekbones and even in her hair. So, every part of Evelyn's body responds to music. When she plays the xylophone, she uses sticks and she can sense the vibrations of the sound produced by the xylophone pass through the sticks up into her fingertips. By leaning against the drums, she can feel the resonance flowing into her body. On a wooden platform, she removes her shoes so that the vibration pass through her bare feet and up her legs. When Evelyn plays the drum, she leans towards the drum and she can feel the resonance, the echo flowing into her body. Whenever Evelyn performs on a wooden platform, she removes her shoes so that she can feel the vibrations of the musical instruments pass through the floor into her feet and up her legs. That is how she feels the sound of the musical instruments. Not surprisingly, Evelyn delights her audiences. In 1991, she was presented with the Royal Philharmonic Society's prestigious Soloist of the Year Award, says Master Percussionist James Blades, God may have taken her hearing, but he has given her back something extraordinary. What we hear, she feels far more deeply than any of us. That is why she expresses music so beautifully. It is not a big surpri surprise that 
Evelyn was presented with the Royal Philharmonic Society's prestigious Soloist of the Year Award in 1991 because she's a great entertainer. She's a great crowd puller. There are millions of people who are waiting to hear her, listen to her music, listen to the musical instruments be, being played by her. James Blades is a master percussionist and his words were the ones that we read before we uh, started reading this chapter. According to James, God took away Evelyn's hearing ability, but in return, he gave her a strong power to, for sensing sounds which enabled her to become a great musician. Evelyn confesses that she is something of a workaholic. I've just got to work, often harder than classical musicians, but the rewards are enormous. See, it's a fact that Evelyn has to work harder. Because, and she confesses that she is a workaholic. She is a person who cannot stop working, who is completely involved in the work that she does. Because she does not stop working because she knew that to be at par with, to be equal with, otherwise to excel, those people who can hear, those people who are uh, the masters of classical uh, music or uh, classical musicians, she had to work harder. She has to work very hard. She agrees that the rewards she gets for her hard work is enormous. It's a huge one. It's not just like a simple, a small uh, result that she gets for the work that she does. She gets a huge result for the hard work that she does. Apart from the regular concerts, Evelyn also gives free concerts in prisons and hospitals. She also gives high priority to classes for young musicians. See, there is another side of Evelyn. She does charity also. She gives free concerts in hospitals and prisons because she knew what is the uh, benefit of getting a support from another person because she was supported by Ronald Forbes. Hope you remember the, the, the in the beginning of her career she was given the support. He is the one who brought her into the present stage of what, what she is. She also takes care of young musicians because those young musicians, those who want to learn music, they should be supported because she knew what is the benefit of getting support. And that's why she uh, does something to bring up those people, those who are interested in learning music. Anne Richlin of the Beethoven Fund for Deaf Children says, she is a shining inspiration for deaf children. They see that there is nowhere that they cannot re go. Evelyn Glennie has already accomplished more than most people twice of her age. Evelyn is an inspiration for all, there is no doubt. She is an ideal. And Richelin, who belongs to the Beethoven Fund for Deaf Children, says that Evelyn is an inspiration for those children who cannot hear. And when they get to know Evelyn's story, when they study, when they learn the story of Evelyn, how she became such a popular star in the world, they feel that they can accomplish everything. There is a reason because she did what other people they thought it is impossible. Because learning music, music to play, learning to play musical instruments without the ability to hear, it is not a simple, simple thing. It's something uh, impossible and she made it possible. So those people, those who think that their disability is not letting them to grow in their life, they should not think that because they can fulfill all their dreams once they come to know the story of Evelyn. And Evelyn Glennie has achieved so much in her life that those people who are double her age have not achieved or succeeded. That much popularity and those many awards, all what she is today, all those she achieved and people of her age have not reached to that extent, to that level and those who are full fit, those who have all the abilities, they have not reached that level. She did. The only reason behind that is nothing but they, that she worked very hard. 
she has brought orchestra sorry she has brought percussion to the front of the orchestra and demonstrated that it can be moving it can be very moving orchestra is a group of people who are performing or playing different musical instruments and generally the percussion instruments like the drums and the xylophones are placed at the back end of the orchestra or they are placed at the side but as Evelyn performs solo she gives special performances with the, the percussion instruments and because of that the percussion instruments have to have come forward come to the front of the orchestra and now it is the leading ones I mean these percussion instruments are the leading ones she has given in inspiration to those who are handicapped people who look to her and say if she can do it I can and not the least she has given enormous pleasure to millions so when we come to the last part of this chapter concluding part we can say that this great personality Evelyn Glennie her story it's something very inspiring it's a big source of inspiration to those people who are physically disabled of course it's not only for those people who are physically fit for those people also it is a very big source of inspiration they feel that if Evelyn can achieve her dreams and they too can do it they too can achieve if a person with this disability has overcome all those and came to this this particular level everyone can reach to that level and above all it's not just being an inspiration but being a source of immense pleasure enormous pleasure that's another achievement of uh, Evelyn Glennie because she has given a lot of pleasure through her music to the audience by playing such good music and that's all the chapter and concluding part when we talk about this the message the, the what we learn from this the story of Evelyn is an inspiration to everyone she has given us all two simple mantras to succeed in our life what are they what are those two simple very simple mantras techniques to succeed in our life number one set an aim in our life and number two simple work hard to achieve it at the age of 16 she set an aim in her life and she started working hard to achieve it and before she turned 25 she reached at, the destina at her destination so in our case just think about ourselves or yourselves you are, you are in your teens have you set your dreams and have you started working towards it if you did in the coming 10 years you will reach in your destination and that's all the chapter thanks for watching